Welcome to Gray Overload, I'm Anthony and I'm taking a look at the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC Motherboards BIOS. I've had this MSI board for a while, it's been running in my system upstairs that runs Plex and among other things. And it's been a great board overall, but now I'm going to take a look at the BIOS and this BIOS is a little bit different than the BIOS that came with it. MSI now calls it the MSI Click BIOS. It's uh, less of a graphical interface and this BIOS does support the Ryzen 3000 series. And I needed the Ryzen, this BIOS in order to have the Ryzen or the 3400 work in my system. And this is all because the size of the... The storage for the BIOS is just too small to support everything MSI want to do graphically and have support for all the processors that we want. So this is trimmed down version and I don't actually mind it. It actually uh, is pretty kind of simple to get around and I really like it. So you'll see um, right off the bat you got up on top you have your system status, advanced, overclocking, M flash, security, boot, and save and exit. And when you first go into it, you press, you know, your delete key to get into your BIOS. You have your system settings, and then you got a little bit of system language, your system date and time. Tells you a little bit more information, as you see here. It's got the microcode, BIOS version, and the OS build date all right here. The physical memory, which you see I'm running 32 gigs. The cache size is an L3 cache size. Then you have your display DMI information over here, and you can... You can either use a keyboard or you can use your mouse. And if you go into there, there's more information about just the system and everything else. So if you press escape, you can get back out of there. And then if we were to head over to advanced, that's where we have our PCI subsystem settings. And then you have basically um, where you can switch on this PCI E1 uh, max link. And I believe this is, yeah, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. No Gen 4, this is a B450 board. And then you also have the chipset Gen switch, um, above 4, mem 4 gig of memory for cryptocurrency or slash cryptocurrency mining. So this is, I don't, I haven't played around with it too much, but it says set the, let's see here, it says enable this item to allow more memory address and configuration space. Requires a 64 bit OS, you know, other optimizations. So. That that's in there, and then you have your PCI lanes, and let's go to the ACPI settings, and just tells you your power LED. I probably should turn that off, just because I don't really. I have this in my bedroom because I have it set up there, so probably should really have that off. But uh, we have your onboard LAN, your RAM, your network options up here for that configurations, your SATA. Um, controller and what mode it's in here I don't have any uh, I don't have any hot plugs but I do have some SATA drives connected here and then your audio controller integrated graphics this for some reason is set to the external graphics so PEG's external graphics even though I only have integrated graphics I set both of these frame buffers to auto one thing I do wish AMD would allow in these BIOS is to actually allocate more RAM than 2 gigs. Uh, I like to go, I, I have 32 gigs in here, so the more I could allocate, that would be really kind of cool that AMD would enable. But you have your USB configuration is the next one. This is basic settings. So you see I only got one, basically one device plugged in. It's a keyboard-mouse combo. So hardware settings. And here it gets into some of the fun stuff. You got your CPU, smart fan control. I just have all this stuff default, right? This system is not something I'm going to be tweaking. I just need it up and running. In fact, I might even at some point... Actually, no, I like this. like the settings where it's at. It does some really nice decode for Plex, so I'm not going to mess with that. But you can see here, basically, you know, the temperature levels and then what the fan speeds are for those levels. And it keeps it really underneath a good quiet setting for this system for what I use it for and then you have your system fan your fan fail warning control and all these settings actually are defaulted so this is basically what it comes defaulted and then you see it has your CPU temperature here system temperature fan speed 
everything underneath there in this hardware monitor. So if you're looking for that, this is where it is. Power management, um, restore power, and then the system fault protection. So ERP in, enables or disables the system power consumption optimization according to the ERP regulations. So there's some power options here. I might change this eventually. I haven't had an issue with it. It is on a battery backup, so chances of it being powered off is very low. Windows OS configuration. And like I said, all this is just defaulted. I haven't messed with anything. Wake up events. Everything is just wake up events by BIOS. I mean, these are, these are all default. You can see here you can resume for different devices. And that is advanced. So now we're going to go into overclocking. And here in overclocking, like I said, nothing is touched. But you can get into this. And there's a lot. I actually should probably turn on a profile for this. Because this is 3200 megahertz RAM. So I will do that later. Not right now. But you'll notice here you can get your C CPU ratio. Your advanced CPU configuration. And stuff in here has got your... Uh, graphics card clock, um, your your core performance boosts. It even has a CDP, which is just kind of limiting the control of how many watts you want to do. So that's actually, let's say you want to go even lower powered than the 65 watts this processor is. You know, you got more constraints in your environment. That would be a great option for th that um, limiting that. But you got core performance. Um, wow. Precision boost overdrive. They got a lot of stuff in here. Game boost. You can disable or enable it. Your FHC clock, which is your CPU base clock here. And on some of these, you just set numbers in. Quit without saving. No, don't quit. If you press escape too many times, it just wants you to quit. Here's your, uh, basically your XMP profiles. A, XMP, whatever they want to call it your memory profiles so you can switch these up select which one and it shouldn't memory should then boost up overall DRAM frequency you can also set it um, do a memory try it which is you know it lists uh, actually lists out the memory combinations of memory speed and timings for users to try it for overclocking that's actually pretty cool advanced DRAM you can set all these if you want to go through all your memory setup they actually have a quite a bit of stuff here. I won't get too much into it. If you're looking at this board, it's actually surprisingly for what I paid for it. I'm actually impressed by what all it has and what they're all able to keep in this new Click BIOS. It's actually better laid out, I think, in this Click BIOS than the other graphical BIOS. So if you're listening to MSI, go more with it this way. But um, you got everything here for your uh, digital power and your overclocking. CPU core voltage, your CPU, some more CPU voltage, DRAM voltage, other settings. So you got your memory, whoops, CPU specifications. So as you see here, it's a 3400G, microcode, L3 cache, all that fun stuff. CPU technology support, yeah, this is kind of whatever it all supports. So that's actually really nice that they give you all that information laid out. Memory Z. DIM1 memory speed, DIM2, you can kind of see that the, it was a kit. And you get this is all laid out too, so that's a really nice thing for if you go into memory and see what all your settings are, that's a good place to go. Um, you got your C state controls, you got your IOMMU, -M -M spectrum spread, all you know, some of these CPU features that you can enable, disable, or set up, I should say. Auto, I think they're most of them are auto enable disable. Yeah, and all these, like I said, are all default. P state adjustments. Then you got your virtualization. It's disabled. I'm not doing any virtualization here. And power supply idle control. Uh, all there. So that is all your settings in your overclock. You can now then flash right from here. So if you go into here, select one file that you can then upload or basically upgrade your BIOS. So. Great little feature. This is actually how I upgrade all my BIOS is through, uh, I get the BIOS on a USB drive. I go into the BIOS and then I flash it from there. I try to avoid Windows stuff. Uh, most of the time it works, but 
in the off chance it doesn't, I don't take that chance. I just go through here and with how simple it is. And with even with Gigabyte, I've done, and this is an MSI. I've also done Asus. It just works pretty simply, and they're all pretty universal in that. That's why I use this. But here's where you come to flash it. You also got your security, so you got your administrator, trusted computing. So... Chassis intrusion, if you have that. And then you have your boot menu here. So you have, you know, your full screen logo. You can enable or disable that. You can even set up if you want it to beep or not. I don't even have a speaker connected, so I don't think that would... There's no speaker on this board, so guess what? Wouldn't matter anyways. Uh, boot mode selector, you can select if you want legacy plus UEFI or just UEFI. You'll see here the boot options, my hard disk, which happens to MB, NVMe drive, then USB, and all these boot options. I mean, 13 boot options. I hope I never get to the 13th, but yeah, that could, I doubt that'll happen. Well, it could if things start dying, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Then if you go in here, you'll see the boot manager for the UFI hard drives, and you'll see it is the Force MP510. I think that's a two terabyte guy in there and uh, works well. You can disable it if you want. Like I said, I'm leaving these defaulted and then you'll see that there's two drives in here. Boot option number two is just a data drive, 14 terabyte um, Seagate. No, I keep hitting this. This escaped too many times, but then you get to the save and exit. So you got your boot overrides. If you want to override the boot, you also have restore to defaults, discard, save changes, discard changes and exit, and save change, changes and reboot. Actually, it's interesting to say discard changes and exit rather than and save changes and reboot. Because I believe, we'll see, does it reboot? Well, we'll see here. But um, yeah, that's actually the BIOS going through it fully. So. Let me know if you got any questions on this MSI Click BIOS, um, especially for this B450i Gaming Plus AC motherboard. It's uh, worked great so far, especially since it does support Ryzen 3000 here with these these latest BIOS, especially if you go back to which BIOS was I having here. Um, this is A70, so as you see there in BIOS version. but So take a look if this is a board that you're looking for for a system you're building. Great little board. I did another video on it in the past about it, but um, this BIOS is here's a little walkthrough of it, and I do want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for helping support this channel and helping it grow. I really appreciate it. It's been um, great to see all the support and what you guys are able to do to help this channel grow. And I do want to say thank you for um, uh, supporting this channel, especially in this time where I'm going, I'm constantly going to the hospital and stuff and just being able to support just keeping up and helping this channel still grow through this uh, time that I have to do that as well. So I want to do want to say God bless and until next time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.